Welcome to Digital Logic Design. Throughout this tutorial, I'd request you to keep pen and paper with you and solve the problems as we go along so that we can identify our knowledge gaps and also consolidate what we just learned. A multiplexer is a digital logic circuit element that selects between several input signals and forwards it to a single output line. Here is an example of a 2 to 1 multiplexer on the left. The multiplexer has one select input, S here, two data inputs, W0 and W1 here, and one output, F here. If we select S equals to zero, the output F is equal to W0. If we set S equals to one, the output F becomes equal to W1. Here on the right side, we can see a higher order multiplexer with four data inputs, W0 to W3 and two select inputs, S1 and S0. Now these two select inputs are used to select one of the four data inputs of the multiplexer. Now if we set S1 equals to zero and S0 equals to zero, the output F is equal to W0. If we set, however, S1 equals to zero and S0 equals to one, then F becomes equal to W1 and if we set S1 equals to 1 and S0 equals to 0, then the output F becomes equal to W2 and so on. So basically we're selecting which data input is transmitted to the output using the select inputs or selectors. So in general, the 2 to the n multiplexer has n select inputs or selectors, 2 to the n data inputs, and one output. The input selected by the select input, the select inputs here, is given as the output of the multiplexer. So the two table of a two to one multiplexer is shown here. So when the selector is zero, the output F is equal to W naught. And when the selector is one, the output F becomes equal to W1. Similarly, for a 4 to 1 multiplexer, we're basically using the selectors to select one of the four data inputs that will be transmitted to the output, F here. Now, what are multiplexers good for? Multiplexers are commonly used for low-cost data transmission. In computer network and communication, multiplexing is used to send multiple data streams here through a single channel or medium. On the receiving side, a demultiplexer, which does the inverse operation of a multiplexer, splits the single data stream into the original multiple signals. Now the cost of implementing separate channels for each data source here is higher than the cost and inconvenience of providing the multiplexing operation at the receiving end and the demultiplexing operation at the uh, receiving end. So the multiplexing operation at the sending end and the demultiplexing operation at the receiving end. Excuse me. So that's why uh, multiplexers are enable us to perform cost-efficient data transmission. Another interesting application of multiplexers is crossverse switch. So crossverse switches are useful in many practical applications in which it is necessary to be able to connect one set of wares to another set of wares where the connection pattern changes with time. So crossword switches are commonly used in information processing applications such as telephony and circuit switching. So here is an illustration of a crossword switch. So the, the way the crossword switch works here is if we set S equals to zero, the crossword switch connects X1 to Y1 and X2 to Y2. However, if we set S equals to 1, the crossword switch connects X2 to Y1 and X1 to Y2. So the output basically crosses over. Now we can implement this crossword switch using multiplexers. So here is an implementation of a crossword switch using multiplexers. So when S is equals to 0, the zero labeled pin 
here pins input data input basically goes to the output so when s is equals to 0 y1 is equals to x1 and when again s is equals to 0 y2 is equals to x2 and when s is set to 1 the x1 pin basically uh, the x1 input here it goes to here so y2 becomes equal to x1 and similarly y1 becomes equal to x2 so we can implement any boolean expression using multiplexers using Shannon's expansion theorem so how do we do that so in order to expand any boolean expression using Shannon's expansion theorem at first we need to select one of the input variables here as a selector input so let's say we have selected w1 as the selector pin or selector input so we can rewrite the original boolean expression with respect to that selector input here w1 so we can rewrite the original boolean expression as w1 bar times cofactor of w1 bar plus w1 times cofactor of w1 so how do we determine this cofactor now in order to find the cofactor of w1 bar that is this function here we set w1 equals to 0 in the original equation of f and in order to find the cofactor of w1 we set w1 equals to 1 in the original expression or equation of f so to illustrate implementation or synthesis of any boolean expression using uh, Shannon's expansion theorem so here we can see an example so we have to synthesize the following expression using multiplexers so uh, first we select any one of the input variables w1 or w2 or w3 as our selector we will expand this function with respect to w1 so if we expand w this uh, function in terms of w1 that is selecting w1 as the selector input we get w1 bar times cofactor of w1 plus w1 times cofactor of w1 so w1 bar times cofactor of w1 and w1 times cofactor of w1 so how do we get the cofactor of w1 bar so we get the cofactor of w1 bar by putting w1 equals to 0 in this expression here the original expression so if we put w1 equals to 0 here we get this expression and if we apply uh, boolean uh, theorems we end up with this expression w2 w3 and again if we are trying to find the cofactor of w1 we set w1 is w1 equals to 1 in the original expression and minimize the resultant expression here so once we do that we end up with w2 plus w3 which is the cofactor of w1 and w2 times w3 which is the cofactor of w1 bar so how do we implement this uh, Shannon's expanded uh, boolean expression using a logic using a multiplexer so the way we do it is that we input this expression w2 w3 this uh, term to the zero pin of the multiplexer and we input this w2 plus w3 that is the cofactor of w1 to the one labeled pin of the multiplexer so here we can see that this is w2 w3 and this is here is outputting w2 plus w3 and the w1 bar's cofactor goes to the zeroth pin and w1's cofactor goes to the oneth pin so we've implemented this boolean expression using multiplexers now we can choose any one of the two variables w1 or w2 or w3 as a selector input so based on our choice of selectors the circuit in each case will be slightly different now I'd like to request you to pause this video and try to synthesize this expression using 2 to 1 multiplexers now please pause the video and solve it hopefully you've got something like this
So here I've expanded the original expression in terms of W1, that is selecting W1 as the selector pin here. So W1 bar times cofactor of W1 bar plus W1 times cofactor of W1. So in order to determine the cofactor of W1 here, W1 bar here, excuse me, we set W1 equals to zero in the original expression. So if we put W1 equals to zero, this term is zero, this term is zero, and we only get zero naught, that is one, times W3 bar, that is W3 bar. In order to determine the cofactor of W1, we set W1 equals to one in the original expression, which means this becomes zero, this becomes one times W2, that is W2, and this becomes one times W3, that is W3. So we end up getting W2 plus W3, this guy here. So, as I mentioned before, the W1 bar's cofactor goes to the zeroth pin of the multiplexer, and the W1's cofactor goes to the one pin of the multiplexer. Okay, done. Now, one thing to note that we could have chosen any one of the two other variables, W2 or W3, as a selector input as well. The answer obtained from those choices would be perfectly valid as well. Now, so far we have learned to implement a Boolean expression using 2 to 1 multiplexer. So what do we do if we want to implement, we don't want this uh, logic circuit, logic gate. What if we want to implement a logic expression using only multiplexers? How then do we do that? So we go back to the original example that I was discussing before. So W1 bar times cofactor of W1 bar, which is W2, W3 here, and W1 times cofactor of W1, which is W2 plus W3 here. So as we can see, if we were to stop here and draw the circuit, we would have to use logic gate to implement W2, W3. We need an AND gate for this, and we need an OR gate for this. So if we were to eliminate the use of any other logic gate and design the circuit using only multiplexers, we have to expand this expression again using Cannon's expansion theorem, and we have to expand this expression again with respect uh, using Cannon's expansion theorem. So here we let us assume that W2, W3 is equal to D, and W2 plus W3 is equal to H. Now what we're going to do here is that we're going to expand each of these functions with respect to a variable, let's say W2 here. So W2 bar times cofactor of W2 plus W2 times cofactor of W2. W2 bar times cofactor of W2 bar. How do we determine the cofactor of W2 bar? Again, we put W2 equals to zero in the original expression. The original expression is D here, D equals to W2, W3. So if we put W2 equals to zero here, we get D equals to zero. So zero is the cofactor of W2 bar. Again, if, we wa if we're trying to determine the cofactor of W2, we put W2 equals to a 1 in the original expression, which means uh, 1 times W3, that is W3. Again, uh, we need to expand H as well, using Shannon's expansion theorem. So if we expand with respect to W2 again here for H, we get W2 bar times cofactor of W2 bar plus W2 times cofactor of W2. So in order to determine the cofactor of W2 bar, we set W2 equals to zero in, in the expression of H. So if we set W2 equals to zero here, we get zero plus W3, which is W3. And if we set W2 equals to one here, we get one plus W3, which is one. So now we can implement the circuit using only multiplexers and requiring no logic gates not and or nand nor anything nothing basically so this is the d input that goes to the zeroth pin of the output remember d was the w1 bars cofactor which is why d goes to the zeroth pin and h was w1's cofactor that is why h is going to the one pin so again uh, the zero pin of the G multiplexer here is zero, as we can see from the Shannon's expansion, and the one pin of the 
multiplexer here is W3, as we can see from the Shannon's expansion again. And the lower multiplexer here is implementing this H function. So the zeroth pin is basically W3, as we can see from the Shannon's expansion. And the ones pin will be 1, that is why it has hit it 1 here. So this circuit implements the original logic expression using only multiplexers. We can synthesize the logic expression, any logic expression using only, only multiplexers by applying Shannon's expansion theorem again and again until the cofactors are 0 or 1 or uncomplemented variables. This is an important point to consider. So how do we know when to stop breaking these functions using Shannon's expansion theorem? So the guiding principle is that we will continue to apply Shannon's expansion theorem until the cofactors are 0 or 1 or uncomplemented variables. So that's the main idea. Now so far we have learned to implement any logic expression using 2 to 1 multiplexers. However, it is also possible to implement these functions using higher order multiplexers, such as 4 to 1 or 8 to 1. So Shannon's expansion can be done in terms of more than one variable to implement a logic expression using higher order multiplexers. For instance, expanding a function in terms of W1 and W2 gives us something like this. So instead of 2, we have 4 cofactors here which corresponds to four possible combinations of the selector pins. The W1 bar, W2 bar score factor is this one. W1 bar, W2 score factor is this. And W1, W2 bar score factor is this one. And W1, W2 score factor is this one. So we're basically rewriting the original expression by taking two selector inputs instead of one and determining the cofactor for each of these combinations. So how do we determine these cofactors here? So we order to determine the cofactor of W1 bar, W2 bar, we need to put W1 equals to 0 and W2 equals to 0 in the original expression. So once we do that, we get the cofactor of W1 bar, W2 bar. Again, the cofactor of W1 bar, W2 is obtained by putting W1 equals to 0 and W2 equals to 1 in the original expression. And the cofactor W1, W2 bar is obtained by putting W1 equals to 1 and W2 equals to 0 in the original expression. And the cofactor W1, W2 is obtained by putting W1 equals to 1 and W2 equals to 1 in the original expression. So the easy way to remember this thing is that when the when this selector is in complemented form, we put that selector equals to zero in the original expression, and when the selector is in uncomplemented form, such as here, we put that selector's value equals to one in the original expression. So here I uh, illustrate uh, this with an example. So we're here trying to synthesize this expression using 4 to 1 multiplexer. So we have four possible combinations, W1 bar, W2 bar, W1 bar, W2, W1, W2 bar, and W1, W2. And these are the cofactors we need to determine for each of the cases. So when we're trying to determine the cofactor of W1 bar, W2 bar, the first term here, we put W1 equals to 0 and W2 equals to 0 in the original expression. When we put W1 equals to 0, this term is 0, this term is 0, and this term is W3 bar. So that is the cofactor, W3 bar here. In order to determine the cofactor of this, term, that is W1 bar W2, we put W1 equals to 0 and W2 equals to 1 in the original expression. So when we put W1 equals to 0, again, this, this is 0, this is 0, and we again end up with W3 bar, which is OK. In order to determine the cofactor of W1 and W2 bar, we put W1 equals to 1 and W2 equals to 0 in the original expression. So W2 equals to 0, mean this is zero means this is 0. This is like W3, and this is 0. So we have W3. Similarly, if we put both of them as 1, like if we're trying to determine the cofactor of W1, W2, we put W1 equals to 1, and W2 equals to 1 in the original expression. 
what we do with this term is zero this term is basically one and one plus x is one so the cofactor of w1 w2 is one so the easy way to remember this is that the complemented variable is equal to zero and the uncomplemented variable is set equal to one when we're trying to determine the cofactor now which of these cofactors that we have just determined here this one this one this one and this one which of these four, four cofactors uh, goes to which input how do we know that so the easy way to remember is that you consider the complemented variables as zero and the uncomplemented variables as one so this is zero zero so w3 bar goes to zero zero pin again this is zero one which means W3 bar again goes to 0, 1 pin. This is 1, 0, which means W3 here goes to the 1, 0 pin here. So W3 here is 1, 0. And this is 1, 1. That means the 1, 1 pin has to be set to 1. So we set this 1, 1 pin 1. So, th so we've implemented this uh, logic expression using 4 to 1 multiplexer. So if we just compare 2 to 1 versus 4 to 1 implementation, we see that 4 to 1 implementation results in a much smaller, less costly, and compact circuit as opposed to 2 to 1 implementation, where the circuit is usually bigger and you need more circuit elements. But for 4 to 1 multiplexer implementation, you need to determine four cofactors, whereas in 2 to 1 multiplexer implementation, you just needed two cofactors. So here we see uh, another example. So I'd like to request you to pause the video and try to uh, solve this problem. So we're trying to synthesize the following expression using 4 to 1 multiplexers. So this expression. So I'd like to, I'd like you to pause the video, and try to implement this using 4 to 1 multiplexers. So please pause the video. Okay. So hopefully you have been able to solve the problem. So. Since variables w1 and w4 here appear in more product terms in the expression for f than any other variables, it is easier to perform Shannon's expansion with respect to these two variables. So here we just did that. So we have to determine four cofactors for four possible selector input combinations, w1 bar, w4 bar, w1 bar, w4, w1, w4 bar, and w1, w4. So in order to determine the cofactor of w1 bar, w4 bar, we put w1 equals to 0 and w4 equals to 0 in this equation and we end up with this in, in order to determine the cofactor of w1 bar w4 we put w1 equals to 0 and w4 equals to 1 in the original expression that is this expression and we end up with w3 w5 and so on now I have expanded by selecting W1 and W4 as the two selector inputs but it's perfectly valid to choose any two of these five variables as selectors but obviously you'll wind up with a different answer but uh, there are basically multiple answers possible for this type of question so if we uh, sort of try to implement this circuit or draw this circuit using multiplexers, we end up with this. So this cofactor here, W2 bar, W5 bar, goes to the 0, 0 input. This cofactor here, W3, W5, goes to the 0, 1 input, so 0, 1. And, uh, excuse me, this cofactor here, W2 bar, W3, goes to the 1, 0 input of the multiplexer, so 1, 0 input. And this cofactor here, uh, 1, sorry, goes to the 1-1 uh, input of the multiplexer. So this is the full implementation of the expression here using 4 to 1 multiplexers. Now here's another problem. So 
please pause the video and try to solve the problem and then we'll try to see if our answers match so please pause the video okay so this is the truth table of a 1-bit subtractor so we're trying to sub subtract uh, S1 from sorry we're trying to subtract S0 from S1 here in this instance so this is the truth table so this is the subtraction output and this is the carry so if we just uh, convert this truth table the output the subtraction output and the carry output to boolean expression and then apply Shannon's expansion theorem we end up with uh, th four cofactors here 0, 1, 1 and 0 but here we only have two variables and we're trying to expand it with, with 4 to 1 multiplexer so we don't have much of a choice here in terms of selecting the selector input so you only have S1 and S0 two variables here so these two have to be selected as the uh, selector input. So when we're trying to determine the cofactor of S1 bar S0 bar here, we put S1 equals to 0 and S0 equals to 0 in this expression and we wind up with 0. And when we're trying to determine the cofactor of S1 bar S0, we put S1 equals to 0 and S0 equals to 1 in the original expression that is this expression and we get the cofactor as 1 and so on. Similarly we implement, we expand the Carey's logic expression using Shannon's expansion and determine the cofactors. The final implementation is basically this circuit. Now thank you for your patience. Now please feel free to post your questions in the comment section and thank you.